Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show how you can use scriptable objects to simplify working with data in visual scripting. Just a quick side note. I haven't posted a video for two months. I was working on a project that I'm almost close to releasing. So if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, be sure you subscribe. So let's get started. And I have this game and in this game I have multiple objects. So if we go in here under items, you can see that I got some items that I want to use in my game. And these are scriptable objects. I'm going to show in a little bit how to set up the scriptable objects. But the question is, how can I use these scriptable objects in a visual scripting? So what you want to do is go to project settings under the type options. You want to add that scriptable object as the type that you want to add to visual scripting. You can find the type name right here under script and mine is called item. So let's look for item. Once we found that, click on that. And after you're done adding it, click regenerate nodes. And that will create the nodes that we need to work with those scriptable objects. Okay, once that is done, we can open our script. So I have a square that just has a sprite render on it. And I will add a script machine here. Let's do embedded and let's go edit graph. Now, what is the benefit of using a scriptable object? You can just drag it in here, beats, and this is the item scriptable object. Now from here, we can actually expose the item if we want to see all of the options that we have over here. For my item scriptable object, you can see that uh, these are the options that I've decided to add. The last two name and height flag is not part of my scriptable object. It's something that Unity adds for all the scriptable objects. And for instance, if I want to use the icon from this beat item, I can just do on start sprite renderer set sprite and pass that icon as the sprite that I want to use. Now, if you want, you can get that icon specifically. So under items, I can just say get icon and that's just going to give me just icon. I usually use expose to see what's available there. And then once I know what specifically I need, I just use the specific node. So let's check it out. Click play and right after it starts, you can see that the icon change. Now my ordering is off, so let me change it to two. And there we go. There is our beat icon. Now, of course, you can add these scriptable objects as variables as well. So for instance, if you want to add like a beat item, we can just say beat. And then for type, we can specify item as the type and pass that beat item here. And you can go ahead and add some more options. So let's do corn and add corn as an option. So now in the edit, we can actually use those object variables instead of just getting that item to pass it along here. I'll quickly set up a script so we can test these two items. And let's set the order layer to be two by default. Let's try it out. So on start, we get the beat. And then if we click space, it changes to corn. Now you can change that on runtime and it's going to switch once it's the churn. But you can see how you can use those crypto objects to store information. Now you can store all this data in variables in visual scripting. It allows that. But I think this approach is a little bit cleaner. You can select each type of item and you can configure all of the settings that are here and you can add more fields if you need later on and those fields can be added. So let's take a quick look at how a scriptable object look in the file. So it is actually pretty simple. In fact, this part, you can ignore that. That makes the file look a little bit bigger, but this is pretty much the information that I'm currently using in this game. 
So just like in visual scripting, you just specify the type of the variable and then the name of the variable. In front, I put publics so that these fields are going to be exposed in the expector. Now the class name is what you want to change for the what you want to call your scriptable object. And then it just extends scriptable object. Uh, the create asset menu option at the top is for the default file name and also how do you want to call this scriptable object in the menu if you want to add it. The fifth option that I have here is an enum and I might cover it in a later video. You can find more information online about that. So if you want to create another object, you can just go under create and right here we have the item and that just creates a starting point for our scriptable object for us. So we can just do test. Here's our new scriptable object and we can start populating the information that we are interested in. So that's a quick run through of scriptable objects. I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next video.